This is Get Sellers Calling You, and I'm Beatty Carmichael. Learn more at our website at GetSellersCallingYou.com. Okay, it's all about getting attention as many ways as you possibly can, okay? And so one of the ways to get attention with, is to have a, a great combination of online marketing and, and making sure we have really good follow-up systems, obviously making sure we're following up, right? But then we have offline marketing, okay? And the greatest marketers in real estate have, make the two of them come together, okay? So we're going to talk and shift here a little bit about using other strategies to take your marketing to the next level and experience better results. And Beatty Carmichael has been working with uh, real estate professionals for over 10 years, um, we're honing in uh, the art and science of using and leveraging postcards uh, to increase lead conversion in geographical farms and uh, in uh, in sphere with your sphere of influence and a whole bunch, a whole bunch of really other cool ways. So uh, pay close attention, take a lot of notes. You are going to, uh, Beatty is a psychology guy. Okay. So you're going to get, I'm just going to, you're going to get a lot of psychology that, so, so just try to take as, as many notes, but just understand the importance that, um, that with, with what he's talking about is, is just the importance of offline marketing and having the right psychology married with it. And that's why I love listening to him train because he just brings a, a unique uh, angle to the table. So Beatty, I'm really excited to, to hear you talk today and the floor is yours, sir. Uh, appreciate What I want to do today is I want to talk, let me see if I can share my screen real quickly. Uh, I think that's got it. Uh, let's see. Uh, there we go. Okay. Can y'all see my screen? Okay. Perfect. Thanks. So I want to talk about increasing seller leads conversion. And I want to try to clear up a misnomer. And that misnomer is that whether you're targeting your personal contacts or you're targeting a geo farm or you're targeting a uh, seller leads that you've generated or any other type of source, you don't change the process and what you do to convert them to a listing. It's all the same because what is the uh, person that you have a personal relationship with? They make this, the same decision as that other agent that's marketing to them as a geo farm and that other agent who's marketing to them as simply a seller lead. And so people make decisions the same way. And what I want to walk you through is what we've found in terms of making that happen. Just a little background on me. Uh, professionally, I've been in this line of business for over two decades. Uh, I, I'm uh, focused on professional to consumer marketing, which is real estate, right? Uh, for the most part, for the first 15 years uh, before I, we moved exclusively into uh, working with real estate agents uh, entirely, we worked with over 10,000 sales reps, 15 different uh, consumer industries. I want to share just one, uh, just to, to give you the background that what I'm going to teach you is not new. It's the same thing that consistently works, okay? It's just applied to uh, where you are versus um, uh, other products and services. But in the early years, we worked with a telecom company. This was back when you actually paid for long distance phone service. And this company was trying to grow. They had some, some bumps along the way. And we started working with them. Within about two to two and a half years, we were increasing their monthly revenues by about $5 million a month directly with new customers. They were adding, uh, they were bringing on sales reps as well. And I think we helped them add like 100,000 sales reps in just one year. Uh, one of the regional sales managers called me up, a guy named Tom Wagner, and he said, Beatty, this is the closest thing to resurrection of the dead that I've ever seen. So what do you mean? He said, I've got people who hadn't taken any action for years, and now they're taking action. And I want to leverage this into talking about uh, generating and converting seller leads, because what you're doing is you're trying to take those consumers to now start taking action. And back in 2012, about nine years ago, we shifted our work to work exclusively with real estate agents. Uh, and we focused primarily with geo, geo farming, your uh, past clients and sphere of influence, seller lead conversions, anything related to 
listings is our focus. And some of the results that we started to get within this industry is pretty phenomenal. Uh, you, meant, you heard uh, Isaiah mentioned we do a lot with postcards. That's our primary source. I'll show you why. Primary source of marketing for our clients. But it's been very effective. One of our clients over in California uh, was sharing that after their second mailing, they'd already listed three homes, had six more listings coming on the market. Another client after about three, two or three months with us, uh, they'd already reached three million in sales and had another three to five million in sales and inventory coming in over the coming months. And so what's happening is there's a science behind this, okay? And that science is if you do it right and you do it well, you will generate consistent ongoing results. And so I want to talk real quickly as we move into this with what I call persuasion effectiveness, probably a bad title. It's kind of a clunky title, but basically, how, are, how do you become effective in persuading that homeowner who's thinking about selling their home to actually choose you over everyone else that they can choose? Okay. And I want to talk real briefly about this concept called a marketing shelf life. Whenever you do marketing, you have to fit, realize that what you're doing has a shelf life, some longer, some shorter. And when we're doing digital ads, that shelf life is probably three to five seconds, okay? Uh, you're scrolling through Facebook, you see an ad, and it may not even be a second. You just kind of skip right over and move on. So digital ads are good for, for, for their purpose of what they're trying to do, but realize the shelf life is very low. Email marketing higher shelf life, lower open rate, right? Uh, but typically email marketing, probably 30 to 45 seconds. And then you get to postal mail marketing and the typical can be as long as 17 days because people, I don't know if you can see this, it kind of, uh, with the background, it disappears. But with, with postal marketing, what happens is if you give them content that they're interested in, they will actually hold on to it. I remember we, uh, we will we'll have people go on listing appointments and they'll be surprised because the homeowner will say, look, Josh, I've kept all your postcards and they fan out this whole stack of postcards. Why? Because it's information that the person thinking about selling their home was interested in and they kept it. OK, so also on this persuasion effectiveness, I want to just kind of give you one other uh, aspect to this that most people don't think about. So there's a guy named Gary Halbert. Some of you will recognize the name. Most of you won't. You'll probably recognize some of his students, um, uh, Dan Kennedy, uh, who's done a lot uh, within the realm of uh, circumference around real estate, Dean Jackson, Craig Proctor, you remember, I'll sell your home or I'll buy it, okay, uh, and myself. And what Gary was, was a legend in his time. And how do you persuade consumers to take action? And as the internet was really coming, to, coming of age, he did a study and a test and what he did, and I thought it was really interesting, he's, he wanted to test the effectiveness of a digital marketing piece versus a, a physical marketing piece. So he took his customer base, which had a high response rate. He created a sales letter to sell some of his digital products, and he split that list in half. Half he emailed the sales letter to, and half he snail mailed the sales letter to. And I can guarantee you that the cost of snail mailing that letter was a lot higher than the cost of emailing because the cost of emailing was free. But the well, you don't look at cost, you look at return on investment. You look at what does it actually produce? And what he found is by snail mailing that letter, giving them something tangible, something that they can sit down and read and not have any other distractions and actually engage on that piece, produced 20 times the number of sales. This is why I'm such a big believer in the mailbox, because the mailbox is the new inbox for today. It's not crowded. And when someone gets something in the mail, here's something else we found. 100% of your mail pieces get recognized and get addressed. 100% get seen and someone will look at it and they make a decision if they want to continue reading it or not. 100%, and because they are holding it in their hand, it also garners a lot more attention. So it's just a lot more effective. So with that, I wanna talk about and shift gears. As Isaiah said, I'm the psychologist, right? Um, so if you've ever read a book called The Millionaire Real Estate Agent, you'll recognize uh, Gary was talking about a topic called mindshare dominance. 
And that mindshare dominance actually comes from a book written in the 1980s by Al Reese and uh, one other guy, I always forget his name, but they're uh, partners in marketing. And that book was called Positioning. And positioning is how effective are you at getting your name at the top of your prospect's mind? Because if you're not effective getting your name up there, you'll never get chosen to sell their house. Okay. And the other, and the other thing that's really cool out of this is what they found after doing a lot of studies is the typical consumer will only remember two or three brands. That means when you're competing in a, uh, in a community of hundreds or maybe even a thousand different real estate out agents out there, in every single consumer's mind, you're actually only competing against two or three agents because those two or three agents are the ones who maintain the dominance in that homeowner's mind in terms of if they're thinking about selling, these are the only agents they actually think about because they're the only agents that they remember. So your goal is how do you get your name to be not only locked into one of those two or three, but to be moved up to number one? That's the goal of positioning. And so you have to understand what makes uh, sellers respond. What makes them respond is this whole thing on positioning. And I want to walk you through a five-letter word that most people have heard, but most people can never really fully articulate. And that's the word trust. If that homeowner trusts you, they will choose you to sell. And I had an interesting experience a few years back. I sold my home uh, and we moved to this one that I'm in now. And, you know, we're empty nesters. So why be normal? We triple the size of our home. And I started interviewing these different agents, about three different agents. And I said, why should I choose you over another agent? None of them had a good answer. And one of them was the number one or number two selling agent in my community, okay, in my uh, suburban city. And they couldn't tell me why I should choose them over someone else. And let me ask you, I'd like to take just a real quick moment. I'm going to pause for about 30 seconds. I want you to grab a pen and paper. And I want you to write down the top three reasons someone should choose you over all the other agents out there. Let's see if you can do it, okay? Write that down. Take 30 seconds. And then I want to see what you've written down. So uh, a few of y'all just put in the uh, chat box. I've got it open. And just tell me, what are the top three reasons an a, a homeowner should choose you over someone else? Anyone have any good ideas? Experience. Every agent out there I know has experience. Honest, caring, efficient. How does that, what, what does that mean? Okay. I'm honest. Every single one of those agents I talk to, talk to say, you know, I have years of experience. I'm, I'm, I'm honest. I'm going to take care of you. Market knowledge. Okay, good. Giving back to the community. Work for you. I hope you're going to work for me. Responsive communication. Okay. So here's what I want to, um, uh, area expert. Left, I love it. Laugh out loud. Okay. I'm going to go back to area expert for a moment, uh, referred by someone. That's good. Okay, I'm going to shut down my chat so I can talk. Um, but here's the, here's the issue that we're all running into, and we see this on all of these chats. We're using words that all agents use, but no one really knows what it means. Or, okay, so I have experience. Well, you know, every single one of those agents that I interviewed all had experience. So why is your experience better? You're, you have area knowledge. What does that mean to me? In other words, it has to pass the oh yuck, oh yuck response or the so what response. If you give me the same message that every other agent gives me, then, then what I think of is you all, you, you, you're all the same. And there's no reason to discern why I should choose you over someone else. This is the whole issue of, of um, positioning. But when you get it, when you boil it all down, it comes down to trust. Okay. Now, let me, and let me, uh, let me uh, bring this into what does that homeowner look for? If you can convince the homeowner of three things, you will win 100% of all the listings in whatever list you're targeting. All you have to do is convince them of three things, but most agents don't understand how to do this. Those three things are, I want you to sell my home for the most money and the least amount of time and with 
the least amount of effort. If you can convince me that you can successfully do that, then all of a sudden I choose you over every single person, including my sister-in-law. Okay. So with that, let me walk you through what trust is because this is real interesting. Yeah. Can you say that again? You said it real fast. Sure. That again. Sorry, that's my dry humor. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, they want to know, can you get them the most money in the least amount of time with the least amount of hassle? In other words, they have extreme confidence that you are the best agent because you meet all of their underlying needs. See, these homeowners, they don't know enough to articulate those three things. But what they do know is they kind of have this feel. They, they're looking for something, but they don't know what they're looking for. Okay. Uh, I'll tell you a, a short example of what I mean. Uh, back in high school, right after high school, I worked in a jewelry store and I saw this gorgeous watch. It was the most beautiful watch I'd ever seen. And, uh, and then fast forward 20 years later, I'm married. Uh, well, my wife and I are down in a foreign country. I see this watch I'm wearing right now. It's just a little tiny watch, it's $5,000. And I bought it immediately. And she said, Beatty, I've never seen you make, you know, such a uh, a rash, quick, impromptu decision like that, especially at that magnitude. You know, this was like 20 years ago when I bought it. And uh, and I said, but what you don't understand, my uh, PA, uh, I said, I've been looking for this for for 20 years. I didn't know what I was looking for, but as soon as I saw it, instantly I recognized it. It's called this reticular activator. This is the same thing that happens with your sellers. They're looking for something. They don't know what they're looking for, but when they're thinking about selling, they're trying to think, who do they go to? In fact, here's a study by NAR. NAR says that 20% of the sellers choose an agent they've already used before. Why? Because it's a safe bet. They've used them. They're comfortable. They'll just go back to what was safe. 80% choose an agent they've never used before, and half of those choose someone that they would refer to them because they trust the person who referred them, and the other half actually did research, and they they figured out based on research who they felt was the best person. In other words, they're all, all intersecting in the same thing called trust, but they don't really understand how to, how to decide what, how to d- discern what that means. So let me walk, walk you through this because it's real interesting. And if you understand this, if you understand what causes the homeowner to make a decision, then everything you do, whether it's online marketing, email marketing, postal marketing, face-to-face marketing, on the phone, by a text or whatever, you can incorporate these elements and you'll always forever win. Okay. So the first thing they have to trust is that they're They have to trust that you're always selling, that you're constantly selling. I'll give you a little secret. If you want the easiest way to do geographic farming that has the highest level of success without any real skill, just send out just sell postcards all the time. When we started working exclusively with agents, our our focus at that time was only geo farming. And when we we would sign up a new client, we would always ask him, have you ever done geo farming before? And those who said yes, Uh, we would all ask him, well, were you successful? Most of them said no, but of those who said yes, we'd ask them, what did you do that made you successful? 100% of the time, they were sending out just sell postcards. And this taught me something really powerful about the homeowner out there. They want to know that you're consistently selling. And unless you tell them and show them and demonstrate it, they don't really know that you're consistently selling. They may infer it, but they don't know it. So this is a real critical part of trust is that they see that you're always selling homes. The second part, and this is the part that most of you are having a real difficult time to express on that chat. What are the three reasons they should do business, why they should do business with you? And the key with those three reasons is you got to be able to, uh, uh, you got to be able to, quantify it. I'm honest. Well, I would hope so. I'm caring. Well, I would hope so. I work for you. Well, I would hope so. I have market knowledge. Well, I would hope so. All these things I would hope so. These are things that I expect from a real estate agent. So why does that make you any different? 
Okay, we got to get underneath that thing. And underneath that thing, what they're really looking for and what I was looking for is someone who could articulate to me, why should I trust your expertise over someone else? Can you help me understand why your expertise is better than all these other agents? Because in my mind, they're all the same. That's what your sellers and your homeowners are, are, they're looking for something that they can't articulate to you. But what they're looking for is, your expertise. And that's why it comes back to, if you can prove to me and help me understand that you can sell my home for more money, you got the expertise to do it better. Sell it faster. You've got the expertise to do it better and take all of my hassles away. You got the expertise and the know-how to take my hassles away and take them on to yourself. If you can prove that, I'll give you my business every time. I have to tell a short story on this as I go. So down in Florida near Miami is a guy named, a guy named Roman Pavlik. Uh, he's, he, he's moved out of personal production, so we don't work with him anymore. But he was targeting this area where the average sales price was like almost a million dollars. And we started to do this marketing for him into this gated community of about 1,500 homes. He called me up one day. I actually emailed me. He said, I got to tell you this story. He said, I just picked up an $800,000 listing because I was your marketing pieces were going both to the real estate agent who lived in the community and the, and the homeowner who was listing their home. They were friends. And after listing the home, they both came to the conclusion I ought to list it instead. So she gave me the listing. The real estate agent gave Roman the listing. Why? Because we were able to quantify and, and help them believe that his expertise was better than hers. That's amazing when you can do that. The third part of trust is that they've met you. Back to the millionaire real estate agent, chapters two and three. If you've ever read it, if you haven't read it, you're missing out on the best thing you could ever do for your business. But chapters two and three, they said that we went looking for what type of list is the best list to target. You know, is it a seller lead, a buyer lead? Is it generated from this? Is it a geo farm or a niche market or your personal contacts? And what they came to the conclusion was very simply, You could break it down into only two lists, a met list and a not met list. And they are that that, that's the only real designation between the two. And here's what we started to look at as well. When we were working uh, entirely with seller leads, we were generating only seller leads at the time we started uh, nine, nine years ago, focused exclusively with realtors. And we started looking at our agents and how many of those seller leads they actually converted to listings. And what we would do is we take all the seller leads that were generated for each agent, then we, we would age them for a year. In other words, we would do our research looking backwards after a year to give them time to come on the market and time for the agent to actually have gotten the listings. And we started to notice a trend. You could put into two groups our agents, one group that got one out of 10 listings that came on the market, and one group that got nine or 10 out of 10 listings. And in other words, this group only won 10% of the listings that they knew were going to come on the market. Think about that. If you knew these homeowners were going on the market and you only win one out of 10, you're doing really poor, right? This other group would win 90 to 100%. That's That's a nine to 10 times increase in results. And the only difference when we started to inquire and and research this, the only difference was those who won nine out of 10 out of all 10 of them, they actually picked up the phone and called and engaged with that prospect, or they went and door knocked and met them at the door. In either case, they met that homeowner. And when they met that homeowner, now the homeowner's trust level increased and they decided to do business with them. By the way, another study from NAR if you're not aware of this, is two-thirds of all sellers choose the first agent that they interview. Why is that? Once I've interviewed that agent, I've met them, I feel comfortable with them, I'm going to do business with them. It's as simple as that. So that's trust, okay? Let me share, I want to go back to this middle trust because this is, most people know, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. And I may be sounding really ridiculous, but three reasons to choose you. I still don't have those three reasons. So you're showing them, you send postcards. Okay. And then, um, and then you have, 
then you said something about knowing your inside secrets, but I don't have anything. Uh, am I missing the tangible here? I mean, you're, you're, you're not. You're, I'm, I'm about to get you the tangibles. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, that, that's I okay. Maybe I wasn't understanding something. Okay. No, and, and, and you're doing, and probably, uh, uh, so you have to pardon me. Um, I know this so intrinsically. I probably skip over a lot of stuff thinking, you know, realizing, well, this is not all that important, or most people know this. And uh, and also get excited. So maybe I'm, I'm going a little fast. The reality is this. So if you go back to the three things that if you can convince a homeowner to believe about you, or if you can persuade them to believe about you, they will choose you all the time that you can sell their home for the most money and the least amount of time and the least amount of effort. So that, that part I get, but what right. are the three things that you're going to say or prove? Or I mean, I know that, but what are you doing to provide them with that? Is right. That so what? now, right. now comes now now comes the rub. So what I'm going to do, and then and uh, this is now the sh as I'm shifting into laying the groundwork. That how do you get to under them believing these three things about you? Okay. It all is encompassed in trust, and trust is now encompassed between number one, they see yourselves and they meet you. All agents know how to do that. But this middle part, how do they trust your expertise, which drives these other aspects? That's what I'm about to show you right now. So let me, uh, in marketing, there's this concept known as outside perception versus inside reality. And the way this works is uh, uh, as the outside, my outside perception is all agents are the same. And so when I asked you guys, why should I choose you over someone else? Everyone started to put in the chat box the same message that every agent says. If I, if I go to Tom and I say, why should I choose you? Well, I'm honest. I'm caring. I work for you. I'm proactive. And then I go to Sue. Why should I work for you? Well, I'm honest. I'm caring. I work for you. I know the market. And I go to someone else and they give me the same stuff. You know what I come to the conclusion of? Gosh, everyone's the same. So it doesn't really matter who I choose. And as long as it doesn't matter who I choose, then why should I choose you over anyone else? Does this, does this resonate? Does that make sense, Sandy? I've got your video. Okay. So what we do is we have to understand what's happening psychologically with those sellers. So in this uh, marketing concept known as outside perception versus inside reality, the outside perception, this is the perception of those homeowners looking at you and their perception is all agents are the same. And because they believe, all, and the, they believe all agents are the same because no one knows how to articulate why you should do business with me. So let, let me kind of cut to the chase and then I'll come back. I want to give you an example. So let's say, Sandy, that you are a homeowner and you've called me in and you say, Beatty, I'm interviewing several agents. Why should I do business with you? I said, well, Sandy, really, that's quite simple. Number one, if you compare me to the average agent out there, uh, you're in a $500,000 home. My average $500,000 home gets $18,233 more than the average agent that sells it. If you look at the homes sold in this neighborhood, just in this neighborhood, my average homes are, are exceeding by $12,253, the average sales in, in this neighborhood. But then if you look at also how fast they sell, just in this neighborhood, my homes sell 3.2 times faster than the typical home. And the reason it does that is because I've made selling a home a science. I know how to identify those things within your home that will drive the highest sales prices by targeting the right buyers who want those nuances that your particular home has. Not every home has those nuances. Most agents just do blanket marketing. They may even just give the, their listing over to their brokerage and say, market this home. And so they use a cookie cutter approach. I use a target marketing approach. I actually take time, believe it or not, Sandy, to analyze your home and start to think, 
what type of buyers most likely want, will want this home in this location and what will they pay more for? And I start to understand that and compare what's being purchased, paying more for in the, in the market area. And then I write custom copy. I take tons of photographs. I use only professional photos and I can keep on going. But what, what I'm explaining now is my expertise that drives the ultimate results. And by the time I finish explaining that to you, you're going, wow, you really know your stuff, okay? So that's kind of how it manifests itself in that interaction. But here's what's happening psychologically. That homeowner doesn't think that there's any difference between any of the real estate agents because all the agents say the same thing. And ultimately all the agents do the same thing. I'm gonna stick a sign in the yard I'm just going to post your uh, home, your listing in the MLS, and I'm going to sit back and wait for homeowners to, for other agents to bring buyers to me. And as long as I believe that all agents are the same, the implication is it really doesn't matter who I choose. Any, many, many more, I could just blindfold myself and just pick one, and I'm just as good as with any other agent. That's the problem you're up against. It's this perception. And we're up against that perception issue because most agents don't know how to describe what they actually do on the inside that makes it work on the outside. So if, so, so watch this, assume for a moment, uh, uh, and Sandy, can I just kind of talk with you back and forth? Can you unmute? Because I think this will be great. Oh, yes. Thank you. How long have you been selling real estate? Well, believe it or not, I'm not a real estate agent. I'm Jillian's um, agency manager. But I set all her appointments. I do everything. Okay, so but, so yes, J Julian is the agent, right? Julian, right? But I do everything leading perfect. up to and right. Okay, perfect. Let me ask you a question. Um, if you were going to, uh, how many agents do you know personally? Oh, lots. Okay. Many. Okay, so right. you're going to sell your home. Who are you going to choose to sell it? The most experienced. Well. Are you going to choose Jillian or are you going to choose someone else? Oh, definitely Jillian. Really? Why, why is that? Because she's so successful. She does exactly what you said. She explains her expertise. She presents in a way that's professional, but yet um, warm, sincere, honest. Okay. Personality. The whole aura of her is just really good as opposed to somebody that doesn't have that, you know, that's more right. abrasive or abrupt, you know. Um, so so, so, so let, let me share what, what's happening is you're describing outcomes of wh who they are, but it actually goes a little bit deeper. And I, I like to challenge you on one thing and see if this makes sense. I was, I was, um, uh, uh, you've been working for Jillian for how long? Um, two years. Two years. So you're pretty in depth in understanding her skill, expertise, and the experience and all the little things that she does that drives value to that seller that causes the highest sales price, lowest sales time, and the least amount of effort. Is that correct? She does all that. So what you're actually telling me with all of these things up here is, is really it's intrinsic because you understand these inside realities of how she does her business that makes her, her results outperform the typical agent. And because of that, you've got confidence in her because you know she's better than the typical agent. Is this making sense? Yes. Okay. And so this is the assumption. Imagine for a moment now that let's say that Jillian is targeting a geo farm or even her past clients and sphere of influence. By the way, write this down. This is something cool. Another statistical data point. Out of your past clients and sphere of influence, out of every 100 that's on your list, did you know that the statistical average, when you're doing it right, marketing and touching them correct, is 17 sales a year, 17 sides a year, for every 100 of those. So look at your list. If you have a list of 300 people that are your past clients and sphere of influence and you're not getting what 17 times three, 50, 
uh, 51. If you're not getting 51 sides a year out of that group of 300, you're not doing it right. You're missing the mark. You got low hanging fruit. And most of it ties into this one thing right here. No matter what list you're targeting, imagine for a moment, Sandy, that uh, that geo farm that Jillian, uh, is it Julian or Jillian? Jill, Jillian. Jillian, okay. That, that uh, farm that Jillian may be targeting, if all of those homeowners understood, understood Jillian's skill, expertise, and experience to the same degree that you understand it about her, is there any likelihood that any of those sellers would actually choose another agent besides Jillian? I don't think so. Yeah. So here's the key. If they knew Jillian's inside reality, they would choose her every time. So here now we have a measurement that we can start to apply. 100% of all those homeowners should be choosing Jillian if they understood her inside reality. So anything less than 100% shows the degree of her inside reality that they just don't understand. All the way down to She's just like everyone else. Or they're just not ready to sell. I mean, there is some of that. Not, not everybody that's a closed. Right, right. I'm talking about sellers. Okay. Right. Someone who's listing their home. Okay. Got gotcha. you. Oh, okay. okay. Got gotcha. you. So of all the people who are selling their home, calling an agent, say, will you come sell my home? If, you know, the distance between 100% and where you are can be measured in their perception of your inside reality. She usually gets most of her listings. She's very good. Okay, so let, let's talk about another measurement. She usually gets, uh, is she doing a geo farm by the, but for, or is she, she does farm? that. She does, okay. yeah, we, we have, we do everything. Okay, so uh, give me uh, just one farm. How many homes are in that farm? Oh, I don't do that part. Okay, so, do you I know how? Okay, so let's say a typical home, a typical farm has maybe 30 listing, 30 sales a year, right? Okay. Is Jillian getting almost 30 sales a year out of that farm? Got you. She's uh, not. No. So, so what you see, and this is, this is where most, right. agents, most agents miss this point. They say, well, I get most of my listings. No, you only get most of the listing appointments that you go on. Right. That's you don't what I get meant. most of the listings. Correct. You only get most of the listings of those appointments that someone calls you up and say, will you come meet with me? You've already broken through and now they're they want you to come talk to them. But the okay. issue are, are those other out of that 30, those other 28 who don't call you up. That's what we're trying to get. That, that, and, and that's the part that I'm talking about is your inside reality. Back to my friend, Roman. When you get a real estate agent saying, I want to give you this listing because I think you will do a better job for my friend than I will, you, you've shifted your inside reality to become their outside perception. And remember this, homeowners choose you the first time based on their perception of you. They choose you subsequent times based on their experience with you. So getting that seller leads that you're targeting, whether it's in a farm, in your sphere of influence, whether it's leads that you generated, it's all about perception. And you've got to help them perceive that you can do better than everyone else. This is the whole, the, the whole issue with outside perception and inside reality. Great. So, You're going to show us how to do that, right? So now that I've <laughs> set the stage, I'm going to show you how to do this. Okay. Okay. So let's apply how to convert these leads to listings by this element of trust. So I'm just going to start with a very simple thing that most home, most agents already do and know about. It's the just sold postcard. And this is the most effective, single, simplest thing you can do if you do nothing. Okay. Just send out a just sold postcard because it shows off that you were successful. You just sold. By the way, it doesn't have to be in the farm. Okay. And if, if you, you guys are targeting, targeting a farm that you don't have many sales in, Prompt me at the end of this, and I'll, I'll talk about that, uh, how to leverage yourselves, even though they're not in the farm. So this is one step. But watch this. I'm now going to articulate 
part of my inside reality is, again, what, we, what they want to know is, can you get me more money in less time with less hassle? So how can I alter this just sell postcard to start to shift my inside reality as their perception? I'm now going to add just a few words to this postcard. I did it again. Another one sold at the top of the market price. Now, watch what happens with this. This sale could have been on the market twice as long as the average sale. It could have been on the market. We could have dropped that listing price down you know, three or four times before it finally sold. And we took a rock bottom offer. And you think as a real estate agent, it was a crappy sale. I agree with you. Statistically, it was. But here's what I can tell you perception-wise and, and legal and, and ethically, you actually sold another one at the top of the market price for that home in that condition in that locality. So why not promote it as that? Because the perception is, wow, that's what I want. I want you to sell my home at the top of the market price, okay? So this is now starting to, uh, to convey inside reality. But now we're going to take a few more words and we're going to articulate a deeper level of expertise that starts to give homeowners who are thinking about selling a higher level of confidence why they should choose me first. Watch this. This home had been on the market 180 days with another agent without selling. I listed at the same price and sold it in only five days for full price. Wow. He is better than all these other agents. You see how all I'm going to do is I'm going to articulate the outcome and the backstory of what happened. By articulating that, I'm going to convince and the perception of these homeowners that I am so far above all these other agents, they have to do business with me. But notice also what's happening. In order to share my inside reality and influence your, your, uh, your outside perception of me, I have to do it with more words. This whole idea that, well, that's too many words, no one will read it. That postcard is too wordy. Crap, you know, bull crap for, you know, on that because you don't understand marketing. Marketing is all about communicating and you communicate with words. The key is that you use words that your, that your, your audience wants to read, okay? So keep in mind, we're not marketing to those homeowners who have no interest in reading my postcard because they're not thinking about selling. We're marketing to those homeowners who are thinking about selling or pondering it, and we're keeping us in top, in top of mind awareness until they're ready to make a decision, and now we're persuading them. Watch this. Now I can take another step deeper and make this just sold postcard even more powerful by simply reconstructing the layout and adding more words. So now I want to teach you something about marketing. A couple of things. Number one, you'll never see reverse print with any of my marketing for important information. Only place you'll see reverse print for me is something I don't care about right here, like the street. I could care less about the street, okay? Because I'm not selling the street, I'm selling the result. Everything else is going to be dark print on a light background because that's how people read easiest. The other thing is it always starts with a powerful headline. So when you get this postcard, the actual, the first thing you're going to read is right here at the top. So now I'm re-articulating what I just put on the other side. After 180 days with another agent without selling, I sell or Bill Smithson sold this home in five days for full price. Here's how. Now watch this. Here's how dot, dot, dot. This is called, um, I call it a trailing ending, okay? Basically what this does is the purpose of the headline is to get someone to read the next sentence. In order to get them to read the next sentence, I can't stop with the statement. I need to have a dangling uh, statement that forces them to want to learn more. So I now create a curiosity. Here's how dot, dot, dot. And now watch this. I'm going to take a moment to read this postcard 
I'm sorry for you high Ds like, uh, like Isaiah who said, I won't read it, but you will read it if you're thinking about selling your home. But I want to read this postcard because I want you to see what it's doing. And I'm going to tell you up front what it's going to do, and then I'm going to read it, and you tell me if it does it. What I want to do is I want to convey my inside reality of my expertise, experience, and skill in consistently getting the top dollar in the least amount of time for my homes, okay? I want to make that your perception about me, and let's see if this starts to move that direction. So how does Bill do it? Here's how. Bill did it again. Okay, I'm just reinforcing. This is just another one. You know, like, uh, uh, yeah, did it again. He sold this home at the top market price. How? Question mark, dot, dot, dot. So I'm engaging them and I'm tantalizing them. And now I'm going to tell them how. He follows a proven four-step process he created that consistently works. Number one is preparation. He helps coordinate handymen and painters to ensure your home is fully prepared to make a great first impression. Second is pricing. He knows the limit to push the listing price without exceeding the market. Properly priced homes always get top dollar. Third is presentation. 95% of buyers start their search online. He uses professional photos and videos in in his online marketing to attract the best buyer's attention. And fourth is promotion. He aggressively markets your home using a proven 21-step marketing strategy that finds more buyers. More buyers means more offers and a higher sales price. Sandy, I'd like to unmute you real quick. Uh, I want to ask you some questions about this. So if you are that homeowner getting this postcard, does this start to increase your perception of his expertise? Honest, answer honestly. Don't be nice, but honestly in how it persuades you. I would definitely be honest. I think it's fabulous. Okay. I definitely set you apart. I mean, I get them all the time. I live in a 55-year-old community and they're just the same thing, the same woman's face, the same picture, you know, nothing ever changes. It's just right. redundant for so, everybody. So, so now yeah. let, me ask, let me ask you a, a deeper question. And I'm going to ask all agents on this call the same question, but only Sandy respond. Is there anything in these four steps that's earth shattering that Jillian does not do, or does she actually do these same things herself? Oh yeah, we do all that. We do the staging. Um, she has a whole um, list of things that she does differently than anybody else. And she would, we would be able to do, yes, she does all that. Right, so here's, here's the point I wanna make. When I call those three agents to my home and say, why should I choose you over someone else? They did all of these things, but they had no idea that those are important to me. In other words, we say, well, I'm honest, I'm caring, I work for you. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, just like Snoopy uh, cartoon. Well, everyone says that. Give me something I can sink my teeth in that says, why should I trust your expertise different? What we're doing is we're simply saying, I already know these things. Let me tell you what I know. In other words, this is what I know. This is my inside reality. Now I'm going to educate you so you see what I do. And once you see what I do, now you're going to understand why my homes get the most money. That's how you start to apply this. Everyone's different. What we do with our clients, uh, by the way, rent postcards, okay, dot com. But what we do with our clients, uh, with our premium services, We actually walk our clients through a checklist. Uh, We give that information to a professional copywriter and we create custom content. That's what we did with this guy that specifically articulates what what that agent does. So it's fresh, it's powerful, it's it's well-written, it's concise, but it's hitting these things. What causes a homeowner to choose one agent over another? Let me show you now how you can take this another step. So here's just a real simple articulation. If you think it's expensive hiring a professional, try hiring an amateur. So (laughs) in this, yeah, we're using this targeting a $300,000 average sales price neighborhood. And based on MLS stats alone, list to sales ratio, days on market, we now make these statements. Bill's homes get $6,000 more for a $300,000 home than the average amateur agent 
or and bills home sell 3.2 times faster than those sold by the average amateur agent. So now we're quantifying in dollars and cents two of the three things they want to know. Can you sell my home for more money in less time? And now I can verify it factually with data and make it really easy for them to grasp what that means. Let me show you something else. We talked about um, trust is that they had a chance to meet you. And we came across this by accident. We were doing some farming marketing for one of our clients for a couple of years. And I was speaking to him at the end of the year. And uh, his name is Zach. And he said, hey, Betty, can we mail that same postcard that you mailed in, in January? I said, sure, but why? He said, because it produced half of all the listings I got this year, that one postcard. So as a marketer, I naturally looked up this postcard and said, what was so unique with that one? The only thing unique was it had a family photo. And then it dawned on me, when you're dealing with a, a, a not met list, that geofarm, those seller leads, anything where it's not your past clients and sphere of influence, they've never met you. And in postal mail, how can you give them a chance to meet you? And what he did is he had a family photo. It was just a snapshot, not a good one like this one. It was just, you know, snapshot him and his wife and their three kids sitting on a couch. And, and that was pretty much the content focus of the card. And, but what happened is people say, oh, now I see him like a real person. He actually is a real person with a real family. They do real family things. I can trust this person. So we started testing it. And California, by the way, is one of the hardest places to break through in the cold market. Okay. So one of our test sites was in California. The first mailing we did uh, for this guy's geo farm was a photo of him and his wife and his kids. He gets a, a call a couple of months later, uh, lists a $700,000 home. And she said, when I got that first postcard of you with your family, I said, I can trust this guy. So it goes back to trust. He, they feel like they know you, that they can trust you. You look nice. And so notice that this isn't me with my clients. This isn't me, just me by myself, like this photo is, Okay. This is me in what I call a family photo. So people can get an inside look as to who I am as a real person. And when you look at this family, you go, boy, they got something together. I can trust them. Let me show you one other thing. Uh, first off, um, uh, let's see. Um, supercharging results. I'm not going to do this. You'll see this if you're interested on our websites uh, where we can identify sellers electronically, stealth-wise. I because have a I know question. Yeah. So with that postcard, was there two things on there, one on one side, one on the other, or you just sent out the postcard picture? Oh, of the great, great question. So all of these postcards here, this is what I call the message side. And the address side would look like something like this. They can have different looks. But gotcha. like on, on this one, on this average, so this is, I'll, I'll just show you how this is operating. So this is set up to go into like a geo farm or even in your past clients and sphere of influence with the idea of grabbing attention of someone thinking about selling. Because if I know who's thinking about selling, I can pick up the phone and engage and get the listing almost every time. So what we do is we offer information that a seller would be interested in knowing. We get them to scan the code. As soon as they do, our system electronically identifies what code they scanned, direct them to the website and email the agent. So now we know who is thinking about selling and the agent can then follow up with that prospect. So that's the backside of the postcard. <clears throat> but let me touch on one final thing. Uh, uh, Isaiah was talking about multi-channel touches. And I want to show you how you integrate multi-channel touches in our version of what we believe are the most important touches and why. Okay. Uh, because, uh, and I've actually picked this up from, from, um, Isaiah. And I go, yes, that's the missing element for our clients. And so once I learned from Isaiah about, uh, in fact, I've, I've got this, Isaiah. Um, so I'm taking notes. This is my note sheet. And I still have it here. I got it circled. And this is Isaiah's comment. 
our sales skyrocketed once we did marketing through multi-channels. Okay. So I'm thinking, so I, I do actually take notes and I come to these things and I'm not here just to promote myself. Hopefully I'm, I'm giving good, good info, but, uh, but this is really important stuff. And so we started doing with this with, this with our agents and, and with their data, databases, and it really does work. So the more channels you use to touch your leads, the greater the impact, the higher the conversion, because you get what's called a synergistic uh, influence. One plus one equals three, okay? I don't understand it. I just know the outcome. And in order to do multi-channel touches, you really have to have additional ways to uh, contact them. So I'm thinking from a postcard mailing, I've got a name and an address. I need emails and phone numbers as well. Uh, sometimes if you don't have it already, especially like if you're targeting uh, a cold market list, like a geo farm, uh, you append the list. With our clients, we have some data partners that we've vetted that do a great job in appending. Uh, with Ren, I believe that you can get lists directly from them already with names and emails and phone yep. numbers. Okay. So the most important thing is you have additional ways to contact them, whoever they are. And a lot of times, if you have past clients in sphere of influence, you have some of their information, but not all. In fact, watch this. A lot of times you may have their name and email, but you don't have their address. And because you get them on your Facebook, you know, their friends on Facebook, you can reverse the pen. If you give us your, their name and email, you know, probably 90% we can match a good uh, mailing address to. Okay. So the key one, is to. One important, one important thing, B, I apologize. For, if you're a rent client, um, just remember you have what's called rent fetch, where you can do that appending, what he's talking about. You can do that reverse lookup within our system if you need to. Um, just to kind of just to throw that out there, if you need guidance on how to find that or work that, just contact your marketing coach. Yeah, so please, go please, go ahead. Please, please do that. We do not do this. Just you can't come to us and just say append this list. OK, it's only yeah. internal. But if uh, but if you're working with Ren, please uh, use this as a lot easier and they'll be cheaper with them than with us. I can promise you that. So um, but with this, once you have that appended stuff, let me show you what happens. So when we work with our clients, we do these first three things in, uh, in white, and then we recommend you do these other three things in gray. Uh, but let me just kind of walk you through what's happening. So the postcard campaign, I've already shown you this, you're tar touching them through the mail. Um, depending, the frequency depends on what type of list you're touching and how well they already trust you. The Facebook campaign, when you do a Facebook campaign, what you're doing is you're taking that email list and you're taking the phone number list. And let me give you a key. If you, and what we're doing is we're creating what's called a custom audience, okay? And a custom audience where you upload your list to Facebook and they take your data and match it to their subscribers. We learned the hard way how to maximize that, uh, uh, that subscriber list. And here's what you do. You, you upload a single list and they ask for like name and address and email and phone number and things of that sort, okay? But don't provide one, one record like Bill Smith, his address, his email, and his phone. Because if, it all, if there's not a 100% match, Facebook won't match it. What we learned is the name doesn't matter and the address doesn't matter because what they really are matching mostly to is an email or a phone. So we upload one record with an email and the next record with a phone number. And that way I've got two bites at the apple to see if, if, uh, uh, if uh, Facebook has a good match. And once we started doing that, our match rate just went through the roof because now they're looking for a hundred percent match per record. And since they're only giving one data point, an email or a phone, then if they got a match, then they lock it in. And if I've got an email or a phone and they got a match, it's, I know it's that prospect. So watch this. Most of us do this easily with our past clients, um, but do this with a geo farm. Can I ask a question quick? Sure. I have, I have tried to upload just email and just phone number to Facebook, but they, I think they do require also a name. Uh, I, I don't think, think so. They, I think they, they've rejected my files because saying that, well, I don't, I don't know that that was last year. So. Right. So um, 
if you contact me through REN support, I can get an answer back to you. Um, I, I don't want, mm-hmm. uh, I can pull up exactly what we do and, and look at our data file. I don't think we do a name, but we, oh, you know, we, I think we do maybe a last name only. Okay. Um, uh, we might do a last name, but we don't want to do like Bill Smith because what if he's listed as William Smith or, or Billy Bob? I'll miss that mark, but he'll always have his last name. So I think what we do is we upload the last name. Only. Okay, cool. Does yeah, because I'm pretty sure I've gotten them rejected saying that we, there's not, you know, you have to have a name. Yeah. Yep. So, okay, thank you. Yep. So you, you Just, use last name only and you'll get a higher match. Yeah. So to speak to that a little bit, B, too, if you are if you're a REN client with us um, in your in your REN marketing hub, there's a Facebook portal. So you don't actually have to go into your Facebook manager to figure all this out. It, and it actually streamlines the whole process and for you to create your custom audience. It'll draw in your database. It'll draw in your geographical farm and it'll help you make sure all that criteria is set so you don't have anything rejected. Um, so if you're interested as a REN client in this, and using uh, the run postcards through agent dominator system to kind of correlate with it, your marketing coach will actually uh, walk you through step by step on how to how to do this. Because what Beatty's saying is so powerful, having the multiple channels going. And uh, Beatty, just to be uh, our next speaker is up in about three to five minutes uh, to give you uh, just a little heads up too. So okay, perfect. So uh, let me uh, fast. Let me fast forward through this and then oh, just open up for questions uh, in the remaining yep. time we got. So your Facebook campaign, both postcard and Facebook is going to start building that brand recognition and trust. Most of the trust that we're doing is going to be on postcards because that's where I can give content. Facebook for us is mostly just to keep you always there. We'll push them you know, four to eight times a month right into their Facebook feed so that they're seeing you from multiple angles. When we're awesome. doing a geo farm, we learn this a hard way. If you start your drip email campaign at the same time you start everything else, get like an 85, 90% opt out rate. <laughs> you know, so you kill it. Um, so, what we started to do is we do everything else that they can't opt out on. And then we start the drip email campaign like three months later. Okay. And we've got some special stuff that we do with our emails and we do twice a month. So, what we're doing is touching a lot. And everything's kind of focused into the same uh, uh, same issue. The uh, last couple of things I want to stress is a video, email, text, and phone. All these are what we call personal engagement. When we have a client that will do these last three things, we'll actually guarantee their results 100% or refund their money. And that includes postcard marketing costs as well. That's what we believe in terms of the significance of that personal engagement. Because if you go back to trust, once they've met you, they trust you. And with a video email, even though they have never met you directly, you're doing this uh, little selfie video and they get to see you, they get to hear you, they get to hear your trust. So it's the next best thing to them actually meeting you in person. Text messages and live phone calls, actually just throughout, I just did a podcast on this one thing. Uh, if you're interested, getsellerscallingyou.com is my podcast channel. And I talk more in depth on that stuff. If you've enjoyed this podcast, be sure to subscribe to it so you never miss another episode. And please like our Get Sellers Calling You Facebook page. Also, if you want to increase sales from past clients and sphere of influence, dominate a geographic farm, or convert home valuation leads, check out our Agent Dominator program. We create custom content that differentiates you from other realtors, then use it to keep you top of mind with your prospects with postcards, targeted Facebook ads, email campaigns, video interviews, and more. And the best part is we guarantee your sales or give all your money back. Learn more at GetSellersCallingYou.com and select Agent Dominator in the menu. Thanks for listening to the Get Sellers Calling You podcast. Have a great day.